I tell you the truth, all the sins and blasphemies of men will be forgiven. But whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit will never be forgiven. He is guilty of eternal sin. Mark 3, 28 and 29. Yesterday we talked of Krishna telling Arjun Sarva Dharma Paritajya Mamekam Sharanam Raj. And it is so beautiful that a Krishna and a Christ are saying something verbatim identical. Jesus is saying all the other laws that you break, all the other dharmas that you violate are no violations at all. They will be easily forgiven. If you have made a promise to somebody and you break that promise, it is no sin. If you are committed to a society and you drop that commitment, it is no sin. Nuptial vows, marital devotion, commitment to a nation, commitment to an organized religion, you break or drop any of these and you haven't really been blasphemous. All these are minor things, they don't count, they will be forgiven. The real man has only one priority and only one commitment. His commitment is towards the truth. All other commitments, all other promises, all other woes can easily be broken or dropped. It doesn't matter what you promised your father or your friend or your wife. Break that promise. All that which matters is your eternal promise to God. And if you break your eternal promise to God, then it is eternal sin. You have no responsibility except one. And that one responsibility determines all your other responsibilities. But if you are saying that I cannot go to God because I have such and such responsibilities and commitments at this stage in life, don't you often hear all of, much of that? I am a mother, I have a small kid. How can I live by the truth? You don't have any responsibility towards the kid. The father of the kid will provide for the kid, who is your father as well. You aren't the mother of the kid. The real mother of the kid is someone else. The real mother will take care of the kid. You be devoted to the real one and the real one will do all that is needed. In fact, the real one will do it in a much better way than you ever can. It is just that the way of the real is not your way, so you will doubt you will suspect and you will be afraid. You will say that the upkeep of the child must happen according to my wish. Do you see what you are saying? You are saying it is not really the upkeep of the child that you are interested in. You are more interested in the welfare of the child as per your wish. So what comes first to you? your wish.
Now, even if the welfare of the child is more secured in the hands of the father, you are not prepared to leave the child. Because if you leave the child, then your identity as a mother is threatened and all the benefits that you get, physical and psychological, as a mother, they are also threatened. The honest one has only one priority, one responsibility, one task, one heart, one center, one mind, one master, one lover, one guru, the truth. Don't have many. All these that you have accepted as your friends, masters, lovers, companions, husbands, they are petty ones. By binding yourself to all these petty ones, don't you see that you have made yourself so petty? You have forgotten your real husband and you are catering to this husband in flesh and blood and he treats you like flesh and blood. Is there any husband who doesn't treat the wife as a body? You are sitting in Rishikesh and it's apt to be reminded the way the saints in India have put it. They keep saying, one husband, one husband, one father, one mother, one friend. Nero to Giridhal Gopal, dusaro na koi. Mira said, one Krishna and nobody else. Nobody else. He is my husband and I cannot take anybody else my husband. One friend and nobody else is my well-wisher. But we want social well-wishers. We want to be our own well-wisher. And then we come to the situation we are in. Deplorable, amusing, pitiable. There's a, a word that's, surf, that's surfaced to describe what you're talking about, this deep devotion to the one. It's called, it's being coined as theogony, being married to the mm -hmm. one. But it is, it is, you know, sometimes you feel as if he is your spouse, the husband, the Lord. Sometimes you even express him as your wife. The Sufis do that. They talk of the beloved as a female. Often he is talked of as the father. In the tantric tradition, they talk of him as the mother. It doesn't matter how you refer to him. It doesn't matter whether husband, wife, father, mother, friend, guru, prophet, what you call him. What matters is that one father, one mother, one friend, one wife, one well-wisher. Not too many. We have too many. We are fragmented. Huh? Kabir laughs and asks, what do you call a woman who has too many husbands? That's our state. Too many husbands.